Mushrooms in Home Assistant? Today we build a minimal mobile dashboard using mushroom cards. Let's get started. So on my current dashboards, there is a lot of information and you can see that here by looking through all of what's going on here. I have pretty much everything I need to know about in one stop on this main dashboard and even on my tablet dashboard or my office tablet where I sit and keep tabs and things around the house when I'm working has a lot of information that isn't necessary for my mobile use. I want a fast loading dashboard that I can use on my phone that has just the minimal amount of things that I need to control whatever I need to control when I'm not away and kind of be aware of door locks and lights and stuff like that. So today we're gonna to build that. We're using just the mushroom cards. In addition, we're also gonna be using grid cards to kind of line everything up. So grid cards and mushroom cards, and we're doing all of this through the UI, which is a nice way to build a dashboard. The reason this is possible is again, we're using the mushroom cards built by Pattaya. I'm probably saying that wrong, I apologize for that. But it's these cards right here. And these cards are a collection of cards for Home Assistant. The purpose of Mushroom is an easy way to build stuff within your Home Assistant dashboard using the UI. So there's an editor for all cards and all options. You don't need to do any YAML with this. You can choose your icons, you can choose colors. No need to install any other card for dependencies. It's got material UI colors, light and dark theme support, optional theme customization, so there are mushroom themes as well, and internationalization. Just keep in mind, the goal of these mushroom cards is not to provide custom cards for deep customization. I've talked about other dashboards I've created that I use the custom button cards, which I talk about here, and the levelless minimalist cards. Those are designed to use when you want to have very customized solutions. The mushroom cards are designed to get up and running with a minimal amount of work and not using any YAML code. Installation is through HACS, Home Assistant Community Store. And I've already installed it, but let me show it here. It's, an, it's a front end item, not an integration. So you just come down here and you search for, or explore and download repositories and look for mushroom. And you have uh, mushroom cards and mushroom themes. Since I've already got it installed, it doesn't show me the cards here, but you can see that I do have the mushroom cards installed. So make sure you have that installed and then uh, do whatever you need to do, either restart Home Assistant. Sometimes you do that, sometimes you don't, or just refresh the front end. Once you have it installed, then we can start using it. These are some of the cards that are available right now within Mushroom. You've got alarm cards, cover cards, which are like your garage and blinds and stuff, entity cards, which I'll be making the most use of, fans, lights, person, templates, chips, and I will use some chip cards as well. Those are kind of cool little things. And then title cards. They're still working on climate cards, which I'm really anxious to see how that's gonna work, a media card and vacuum card. Let's take a moment to talk about this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Take some time and invest in yourself and your personal growth. Have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. With courses in coding, data science, programming foundations and languages, and many others, there is something for everyone. Skillshare even has new premium classes launched each week, so there's always something new to discover. I'm a lifelong learner, so Skillshare fits right in with that. I can add to skills I already have or learn something entirely new. Skillshare makes it easy because I can take classes anywhere on my computer or my mobile devices. One of my favorite courses so far is Arduino Road to Success. This class helps me to work on my problem solving and critical thinking skills, something that I find useful all the time when building out my home automation and IoT setups. And you can see from my videos that I do have times when I've got to do some serious problem solving to make things work the way I want them to do. You can discover all Skillshare classes for free. Just click on the link below in the description to become a Skillshare member and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do to create a dashboard is go to my configuration options within Home Assistant. Click on dashboards. And I'm going to add a dashboard by clicking the blue button down here. I'm going to call the dashboard um, phone 
I'm going to give it an icon. Let's just look for phone here. I will do uh, cell phone basic. We'll be fine for that. And then, of course, the URL is automatically filled in. You can set this to admin only, typically not the way you would do this in this case. And then show it in the sidebar if you want to show it over here on the left-hand side. Create the dashboard. Now, I'm going to open that dashboard. And you'll see it has all kinds of junk on it. So we want to get rid of all of that. So first thing we do is come over here to the, to the dots, edit the dashboard, and we're going to start with an empty dashboard. And we're going to take control. So now we have a blank slate to use for our dashboard. And I'm going to add my first card. And I'm going to use grid cards to keep everything lined up. So we'll start with our first grid card. And I'm going to nest grid card. So I'm going to have my first uh, first grid card. That's the container for all of my dashboard items. And then I'm going to have individual nest cards inside that one when needed to make sure everything lines up properly. So I'm going to start with a single column, non-square. And that's going to give me everything I put in this area will be uh, a single grid card or will be inside that single grid card. So let me save this. I'm going to go ahead and change my theme to light so it's easier for you all to see while I build this dashboard. All right, so let me go back over to that dashboard now. You'll notice it's on the left-hand side as I set that to be visible there. And this is the whole dashboard, absolutely nothing, right? So we're gonna edit it again. We do see our initial grid card. And so now inside this initial grid card, I'm gonna add my first mushroom card. Because I'm using the chip card, which will be the first one, I don't need to put a grid card because this mushroom card is going to line everything up for me automatically. So let's go with the mushroom card. Let me search down for the chips card. And I'm going to put six different chips on this first, uh, this first line here. I'm going to set them as centered as well, which is really cool. Having those line up uh, centered for me uh, helps my, you know, my symmetrical view of things, which is the way I like it. Uh, and it's nice to have an option alignment right inside the UI so you don't have to do anything on the actual YAML code. So let's go ahead and add our first uh, device here, our first entity. That's going to be the alarm panel. So alarm control panel. And this uh, just gives me the status of my alarm system. All right, so I'm going to leave the name uh, alone because we're not going to show it on here. My icon's gonna say, stay the same. Uh, you can change the colors to all kinds of different colors here, but I'm gonna leave it as default for now. And everything else here, I'm gonna change to no action because this is simply a display chip. I don't wanna do anything with this. You could potentially do a default action where it might open up a control panel card, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna run separate uh, chips for all of my statuses of my alarm system. So we need to go back to the chip editor once we've made our first chip. And we're going to add a second chip. And this is going to be an action chip because I want this chip to actually do something. And then we go into edit that. The icon I'm going to use as, um, this is going to be an alarm panel uh, icon. So I want shield account. And I want this one right here. To me, that's a person, which means it's going to be the, there's somebody in the house. You can choose whatever icons you want, obviously. This is a, what makes sense to my brain. And for the default action, I want no tap action. Since these are dealing with the alarm system, I want to be able to have some sort of extra safety measure. And the way I do that is using all of my actions for the alarm control panel will be hold actions. That means you actually have to hold the button down for a couple of seconds for it to actually activate. And then I'm going to set that to no action for the double tap. So no action on tap, no action double tap. And for the hold action, I'm going to set this as a call service. And I use scripts for all of my alarm settings because I want the scripts to do things like turn lights off, lock doors, shut garage doors, set thermostats. All of that happens inside of a script in Home Assistant. And so I'm just going to call the script to activate the setting of the alarm panel and do all the other work. So this is going to be uh, stay. So I'm going to call this, or this is going to be the script called alarm arm stay. And anytime you hold the button down, this particular chip, it's going to actually activate that. So we have our panel status and we have our first chip that actually does some action, which is to set the alarm into stay mode. And we go back to chip editor and I'll do another one for you. And then I'll fill the rest in so you don't have to watch the whole thing. We're going to add another chip, another action chip, edit that one. 
And this is going to be a different uh, alarm action. So that's going to be shield. Actually, that one's going to be, we're going to call this one HVAC. We're going to use this one. I use this particular script to set the alarm to away mode but not turn on the HVAC or not mess with the, the configuration of the thermostats. I don't want them going into eco mode or power saving mode if we're gonna be gone just a couple of minutes or a little bit of time because then the house heats up or cools down, whatever. I want it to continue to, to function while we're away for just a short period of time. So I set a special alarm mode for that. Leave default color here. Default action again, nothing. Double tap action, nothing. And for this, we'll call the service again. And this one is going to be HVAC. So script alarm, arm stay, no HVAC. And you'll see we have this one right here. Now I'm going to go back in and add the rest of these and we'll come back and look at it when it's finished. Okay, now you can see that I've added all six of those chips on this single first line or first row. So we have the disarmed or the, the panel status. Uh, stay mode, HVAC, alarm mode, night mode, away mode and disarm. And all of these require a long press in order for them to function. So we've got our first main grid card. We've got our first uh, level of card, which is this uh, mushroom card, this chip card. We're gonna add a second level right below this one, another chip card. So mushroom chip card. And this is gonna be the same kind of setup, only I'm gonna put thermostat information here on this one. I want my upstairs, downstairs temperatures, outside temperature and outside humidity, because those are the things that I'm most interested in or would be interested in if I was away from uh, my house. I have a ton of other uh, temperature measurements and sensors around the house that I use on my dashboards that are permanently fixed to my desk or uh, that I view full information on the house, but not for this mobile version. I don't need all that information. So let's start with our chip card here. Again, we're gonna center it. We're going to edit this and change it to our first item, which is our upstairs or downstairs thermostat. I want my downstairs temperature to be displayed there. And I'm going to not name it because I, I don't have the room to put a name anyway. The default information is gonna be the state. The icon I'm gonna change because this is a, a card that's gonna only have a limited amount of space. I wanna know which thing this refers to. So I'm going to look for an arrow, or I'm going to actually look for down and find a down arrow that tells me this is the downstairs thermostat. So you can see here it changes it to an arrow. So that's all I'm going to do there. I'm going to leave the colors and everything else the same. Actions um, are default. It's basically if you click on it, it's going to bring up a history box. So I can leave that as default. I'm going to add another chip. Again, it's going to be uh, an entity chip. And that's what this first one was, by the way, it's entity chips. Now we're not doing actions, we're just doing entities because we're not gonna do anything with these. We're just going to view the, the information. So if I click on this one and edit it, we'll do uh, a different one called upstairs. So upstairs temperature and we'll leave everything else the same again, except for this time, I'm going to use up arrow. And so now you see we have the up arrow. So downstairs, upstairs, everything else being the same. And we'll do this again for the outside temperature and the humidity. And now we have all four of our chips that we're gonna be using for temperature display. So you have your downstairs, upstairs, outside, and I have a little tree icon here to tell me it's the outside temperature. And then the outside humidity is a little looking rain water drop or raindrop. So those are my first two rows for this dashboard. We're gonna add a, another card on this particular level. So we have the main one, remember, the main grid card with one row. Now we're gonna add one, two, and then our third card will be our first grid card. So we're gonna add grid card here. We'll do some initial settings. Um, this one's gonna be no squares and before columns. We're using mushroom cards for all of this. So we're gonna build the entire dashboard out of mushroom cards. And all of these now are gonna be entity cards, I believe from this going forward. So let's do an entity card here. And there's some options we're gonna set on this as we go along. Now the name of this is gonna be front because I'm gonna start putting my door locks on. And we're gonna change this to lock. That'll be there, right there. And you notice it's kinda, you can't read it, right? So we're gonna have to make some changes to make sure everything fits on the, the block of area that we're using. The icon we're gonna leave as default. The color, I wanna change that to green because I want it to be green when it's locked. 
The default layout, now this is the important part, and I'll do this for every one of these uh, mushroom cards that I use from this point forward because of the way I have the layout going. It's going to be a vertical layout. And see what it did automatically? It moved it so that everything is lined up in a vertical fashion. Now you can remove the state information to none here, and that will shrink this up a little bit. Uh, actually, that's the name. You want the name, but you can remove the state on the second one. You can actually choose whatever order you want or where, whatever these things are you want to put in here. So I can take that and just say none to this one. And now you can see from the picture it's locked and you know which one it is by the name. So that compresses it down just a little bit. If you have some space issues on your dashboard, you can remove some of these uh, fields that you don't want to display on here. And then for the tap action, I want it to toggle. So it's going to lock and unlock that door. And the rest are going to be no action. It's not going to do anything for either one of those. That's the front door lock. For the next item is going to be, for this row, will be this uh, card level here. And we're going to do another mushroom entity. We'll choose that. And again, this is going to be another lock. So we'll do the back door lock. We'll call this one back. Icon will stay the same, default color green. And when this changes state, when the door becomes unlocked, it goes to non-colored. So you'll be able to tell the difference visually by the color of some of these uh, different uh, cards as well. And then you can do default layout of vertical. Default information we'll leave as, we'll just leave it as state and then we'll take off the name. So nothing there. Again, we want to toggle and we don't want to do anything for the other two actions. And so you have your front and back door locks now displaying on this particular uh, row right here. I'm going to add the two other items on here and I'll come back and talk about those. Okay, so I've added the other two uh, cards here, two more entity cards. These are the statuses of my front and back doors. And they're just denoted by the binary sensors. And then I change the door to, or the icon to be the door. And then the icon color will turn red. So if any, either one of these is open, the icon will be red. So that should stand out. And then everything else is the same. Uh, this is just basically information. It doesn't do anything for the doors. And I did the same thing for the back door. Everything is the same on that one. The, the next row we're gonna do is another set of statuses of things that I find are important for me to know if I were to visually look at this dashboard from a remote location. And that's the status of the gates and of the garage door. And I kind of categorize these together on these lines that made sense to me. So we're gonna add on this row, or on this level, another row that's gonna go below this one. So we'll add this one and we'll add a grid card. And again, that grid card is down below this one. And it's the same entity card. So we're gonna just go ahead and add this row for you so you don't have to watch me type it all in. This will again, it will be three columns and I will throw all this in and we'll come right back. And now we have this row as well. These are my gate statuses. So the North gate, South gate and garage. And again, with the exception of this card right here, these are entity cards. So we have mushroom entity, another mushroom entity, and this is a mushroom cover card. And this card is specifically for uh, things like garage doors and things like that. And so the icon will actually change on this one based on the up or the status of the door, whether it's closed or open. And there's some other options you can put on this button or on this card, position control and button control. So you could do a position control here, which my garage door doesn't do anything with. If you click that, then this allows you to slide this right or left. And then this one allows you to open or close it. I don't need those because this one is basically just going to toggle what the status is. Since my garage door is either open or closed, it will just do the toggle. So I'll get rid of these two buttons right here. And now we're going to add yet another card on this level that's going to put it down below here. And it's going to be a grid card. And the next two levels are going to be light. So I'm going to put all those in together. It's the same concept of creating these mushroom cards. We're just adding the same mushroom, mushroom cards down below here. Okay, so to spare you watching me click a bunch of buttons, this is all the same stuff. Now I have my lights. The differences, of course, are the number of columns. So this is a five column card or five column grid card. If I did four, it would just wrap that down to the next line. But this is a five column. So we have five cards across here. And then the next card, uh, on the next level would be four columns. And that's this one right here. These are all entity cards, just, just like the ones above. The action is toggle for these, so you can turn lights on and off with these. And you notice the color changes when I click on it. It goes to a yellow color. There's one final card or one final row I wanna add to this on this level here. That's row number seven. Again, it's gonna be a grid card. This one will have two columns. 
and those will also be mushroom entity. I want to be able to disable and enable the automations that I use to alert me when someone's in uh, close in areas on my cameras. So we'll go in here and we'll change this to automation driveway motion person. And you'll see it puts the icon for automation. I will say, I will call it just driveway to make it short. And the default color, I'm going to change this to uh, kind of an orange color or an amber color. That's when it's on enabled. That's when that will be amber. I want the default layout again to be vertical. Now you could you could leave this one uh, horizontal because you're only going to have two of these and you have enough space. So I could even make the name longer. And then I'm going to add a second one here. Same thing. Mushroom entity. And I'm going to do another automation. This is going to be front porch. And I want the icon or the color to be, again, I want it to be amber. And we'll leave it, we'll change the name. Front porch motion or person, because it is a person motion detection. We'll leave it as default. The action is going to be toggle. And I didn't do that on the other one. So let me turn these to no action. And then toggle on this one. For tap and then none for the other two. Okay, so there is our entire dashboard. Let's save that and take a look and see what it looks like. Now, this is what it looks like on the computer screen. Let's take a look and see what it looks like on the phone screen. You can see on the phone that right now, if I scroll up and down, there's absolutely everything is right at my fingertips. And I can push any of these buttons here and turn lights on or off. One thing I didn't point out was the fact that on some of these, and let me go back over to the other screen, these are groups. So this is actually multiple lights and multiple lights here, multiple lights here, multiple lights here. I did that for space saving reasons. So that is the dashboard, uh, the minimalist dashboard, dashboard using nothing but mushroom cards and the grid. The grid card, you still need some way to containerize it and keep things lined up nicely. And the grid card does that for you. The chip card, remember, that also does it nicely. It keeps it centered or whatever your layout's gonna be on these chip cards. They're all centered and put in exactly the right spot. And then the grid cards help to do with the rest of this stuff right here. So let me know if you have any questions. I hope this was helpful to you. Dashboards are always fun to build. You use all these things within your home assistant environment. And yes, there is an argument about whether or not everything should just automatically happen for you when you walk around, but that's not reality. In a lot of cases, you still need something to view statuses and you still need something to be able to control devices. So this minimalist dashboard is something that you can use in order to do that. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, we'd love for you to subscribe. Uh, and then uh, if you're not a channel member and you wish to support the channel, that would be awesome to do as well. We will see you on the next video.